For my journey box, I decided to move to more of an online formatting because of our situation. And I decided to focus on Katherine Johnson. So the first thing that I'm going to have students do, um, if this were in a physical form, they would have envelopes or something like that. But I think it works pretty well online as well. So day one, we're going to do an introduction quick draw. Um, I'm going to explain that in a second. Then we'll go over the essential question, we'll look at the biography of Katherine Johnson, and then we're going to do a read aloud. So this is a PowerPoint that would be projected to the students. So that's how it's written. So when I show them this first part, I'm going to say, draw the mystery person. Here are your clues. Um, you can read the clues below here, but what I'm kind of hoping to have happen is that they will have some biases and draw a man, um, perhaps a white man, when talking about NASA and science. Um, and then we'll challenge those biases when I tell them that the mystery person is Katherine Johnson. So they will have that introduction. Then they're going to discuss that. So they're going to have their drawings around the room and we're going to talk about our own biases and how that compares to right now in 2020 and then in the 50s and 60s. Um, I want them to be accountable for their own thoughts. I will tell them the essential question, which is, what challenges did Mrs. Katherine Johnson have to face in order to prove herself as a critical mathematician for NASA during the Great Space Race? Then we'll look at the biography of Katherine Johnson in NASA. Um, I will have this printed out for students, and we will read it together. Then after that, we will do a read aloud. So there's a great book by Suzanne Slade called, a, excuse me, called A Computer Called Catherine. And as they listen to this, I want them to think about the challenges that Catherine faced um, because it will be important for them when they do their culminating project. And then for that homework, I'm going to give them a question to interview a grandparent about what it was like to live in the 50s and 60s during segregation because during day two, I'm going to have students talk about segregation. So day two, they're going to be looking at segregation. They're going to talk about the grandparent interview they did the night before and then what segregation was like for Catherine. So when they first come in, we're going to talk in groups about their interviews. If they don't have a grandparent that they can interview, they could interview someone they know in the community, or they could have their parents help with just some research. Um, but they all should be able to come in with something to share. And they will do the sharing in groups, and then we'll do a whole group discussion. Then I'll have a brief presentation just of segregation in general. Um, this is a good time for if questions come up through the interviews and I can show them these images. But I thought it was a better idea to have them interview their own families um, and just to have a little bit more of a discussion point besides me telling them what it was like. And maybe grandparents might have a different point of view than what I may have had. So day three, we're going to be looking at um, sexism, really. I chose uh, to change the language a little bit because this is for fourth grade. Um, and I thought that they would react a little bit better to just looking at the role of men and women. Um, so we're going to look at the role of men and women. We're going to do a gallery walk and then talk about what it was like for Catherine. The gallery walk will have images of the roles of men and women throughout the room and they'll walk around and put sticky notes on the walls and notice things particularly about those images and then we'll have a discussion afterward. This is a video I found from the cast of Hidden Figures and I'll talk about that movie briefly. 
I didn't necessarily want to include the movie because it is pretty fictionalized. Um, I did some research on my own and found that a lot of it was for drama, so I didn't want to include the movie, but these actors did talk about gender equality a little bit, and I think that the students might relate to that part. And then we'll do a turn and talk to kind of summarize the gender conversation. Why do you think that Katherine Johnson refused to follow these gender roles, and did this impact her accomplishments? So hopefully that's a nice discussion that we can have. Day four, we're going to look at interviews and accomplishments of Mrs. Johnson. I wanted to include her in her adult life as well, um, just to show that she did work for a long time and many people do respect her. So the first video I have is an interview from, I believe, 2017, um, and it's advice for students from Mrs. Johnson. The next video I have is when Ms. Johnson earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And then this is a video of the mission that Mrs. Johnson was, that kind of set off her career, which was the Friendship 7 on February 20th. <laughs> then finally we have a video of um, more of a background of her life and her family speaks a little bit in here and then it mentions one of their favorite part was receiving letters from students. So for day five they're going to write thank you notes to Mrs. Johnson. Um, I will explain that Mrs. Johnson recently passed away uh, in 2020 but they can still write to her um, should she be alive and then maybe we could even try to send the letters to her family. So here's a preview of what the letter would be and then this would serve as my summative assessment to see what they learned and what challenges she faced and what they're thankful for for the challenges that she faced that impacted my students. And then there's the references. Thank you.